The UCL School of Slavonic and East European Studies is arguably the most important institution of its kind in the world. It celebrates this year its centenary. Everyone is a specialist in the region. Everyone is exceptionally well-traveled in the region. Given that we are studying one particular uh, part of the world, and given that we often sort of focus on specific social issues, it's sort of quite clear that you can't study these issues from one single disciplinary perspective. The world out there isn't neatly divided into different disciplines. <laughs> One of the good things about studying at CIS is that people are not only a part of UCL, which can be sometimes really big, but they also belong to a small community. Some of the one-on-one, -on -one, the smaller classes we were in with some of the uh, professors that I worked with, they made a, a, a big impression on me because they were very learned people, they were you know, kind of good people, you know, they wanted to share their knowledge and it's those kind of smaller groups, those classrooms where you're working with you know, individual professors and, and how that affects you as a person. My day-to-day -day life is spent with the history staff, with fellow history PhDs. But you come into contact with a whole range of people who are doing different disciplines. So, you know, they're doing literature, they're doing economics, they're doing, you know, modern foreign policy. CIS has a very, very important element to it, which is its area focus, which goes hand in hand with its interdisciplinarity. Just being surrounded by these people talking about ideas, it really broadens your mind and my research is quite interdisciplinary anyway, so I find it a really useful stimulus just to make me think in other directions and I really don't think that I would have got that if I'd just been in the history department at another university. Over the course of time my research shifted uh, quite significantly away from international relations um, and looked much more at sort of migration, sexuality and health um, and this wasn't the result um, of my attending seminars and lectures at CIS or at least sort of not only um, due to that um, but it was sort of talking to colleagues in the corridors or over a coffee in the senior common room asking what they were working on um, and my interest sort of being piqued um, and sort of my research therefore being sort of sent off in in sort of unexpected uh, directions. Here we believe that language is culture so uh, that's the approach uh, from which we teach the languages. At this point in time we may be the only institution in the world that teaches 18 languages of the region. All the academics working at CIS are obviously fluent in a number of these East European languages and they incorporate these language skills into their research. And that brings about very important cultural insights into whatever discipline uh, one is engaged in doing research. The school was founded by several extraordinary individuals. Among them, the three most prominent are Sir Bernard Perez, Robert Seaton Watson and Tomasz Garrick Masaryk. Masaryk delivered a very important lecture in October 1915 on the fate of small nations of Europe. He later became the first president of independent Czechoslovakia. Many prominent scholars, politicians, artists, writers from the region who were later joined by a set of extraordinary researchers from all over the world, produced a remarkable body of scholarship over this 100 years and trained a broad range of students. Among our alumni, we count prime ministers, parliamentarians, functionaries of many important international organizations and many successful business people.